Do not ask me again. Hey everybody, welcome to The Whole Truth, where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation without skipping anything. Did anybody else see my mom a minute ago? Because I, I felt like I heard her, at least what she used to sound like when I was a kid. Now she's got grandkids and she doesn't sound that way anymore. But when I was a kid, that's exactly what my mom sounded like. You will want to subscribe for this week. I hope that you plan to come to every Bible study this week. So every day, Monday through Friday. Now, some of you are watching this in the future and this doesn't apply. But for those of you who are watching these as they come out, who are staying with me as we travel through the Bible, um, here's the thing. This week is really cool. It's like a five-part series. So Monday through Friday of this week, as each video comes out at 6 a.m. every day, um, there's going to be a new addition to the same story. We are literally watching the fall of a prophet named Balaam. There's this prophet and I don't agree with exactly what everyone else says. I can only look at what the scriptures say. And it's interesting to me that there is this prophet. Everyone wants to account account for this guy as like a, like he's a false prophet and he talks to all kinds of gods, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems like this is a guy that knows God, knows that his power and his ability and the things that he does, blessings and curses, it seems like he knows that they come from God but he falls to temptation. And we're going to watch that happen over the course of the next five days. This will be a story that builds one upon the next. It's the story of Balaam. If you've ever heard of Balaam's ride, that's where uh, his donkey talks to him. That's going to happen right here. This is one of those stories when I told you in the beginning of Numbers that Numbers was just full of little nuggets. There was just these wonderful nuggets of stories in the book of Numbers. This is one of those stories. I love the story of Balaam and what, uh, what it represents and what it means, maybe not necessarily what happened with this guy, but he's tempted and then he falls and we're going to watch that. And how does any of that apply to us? Well, we're going to see it today in the first part of, of Balaam. We're going to see where the temptation comes from as a guy named Balak introduces himself to Balaam. Balak is the king in Moab and he is going to introduce himself to this guy, Balaam, who everybody seems to know is a prophet. Let's read it. We'll read from the first verse of chapter 22. So this is Numbers chapter 22 and verse 1. Stick with me. Then the children of Israel moved and camped in the plains of Moab on the side of Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was sick with dread because of the children of Israel. And so Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now this company will lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at the time. Then he sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor, at Pethor, which is near the river of the land of the sons of his people, to call him, saying, Look, a people has come from Egypt. See, they cover the face of the earth and are settling next to me. Therefore, please come at once. Curse this people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed and he whom you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the diviner's fee in their hand. And they came to Balaam and spoke to him the words of Balak. And he said to them, lodge here tonight and I will bring back word to you. As as the Lord speaks to me, so the prince of Moab, sta- the princes of Moab, stayed with Balaam. Then God came to Balaam and said, "Who are these men with you?" So Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent them to me saying, look, a people has come out of Egypt and and they cover the face of the earth. Come now, curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to overpower them and drive them out. And God said to Balaam, you shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, go, go back to your land. 
for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Then Balak, Balak again sent princes more numerous and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said, thus Balak, the son of Zippor, please let nothing hinder you from coming to me. For I will certainly honor you greatly and I will do whatever you say to me. Therefore, please come curse this people for me. Then Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now, therefore, please, you also stay here tonight that I may know what more the Lord will say to me. And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, if the men come to call you, rise and go with them, but only the word which I speak to you, that you shall do. So Balaam arose in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. That's the story we're reading today. That's as far as we're reading today. The, this story goes on for the next several chapters, and then we actually see the ending of it. We see what happened with Balaam all the way up in chapter 30, and I'll talk about those as we get to them. For now, just understand that there's Moab. Moab is beside where the Amorites were. Remember the king of Og that came out, um, King Og that came out, and he fought against Israel. Remember how these men had come out and fought against Israel, and they lost these nations had lost to Israel. Remember the first group as Israel was beginning to move, the first group Israel said, can we come through? And the person said, no. And I talked to you just about missing their blessing. They could have been blessed, but they missed it because they simply said no. But Israel didn't attack them. These next two cities that we saw, it was like one attack after another. These cities and these, these nations came out against Israel and Israel fought them and Israel won. Well, the word is spreading that Israel has been winning. And Israel Israel has a, another group next in line. They're right beside Moab. Now, you have to understand something. God has told Israel not to harass Moab. Leave Moab alone. That's what he's told them. I'm not giving you a Moab. Do not go to Moab. It's in Deuteronomy. When we get to the a repeating of the law, we will see as Moses repeats, as God had told them to leave Moab alone. But Moab was afraid. They saw all of these people. They saw them. It, it, there were millions of them. They had a strong army. And now they have a reputation of defeating these other cities. And so this king of Moab, his name is Balak. He is so afraid with the people. They're all afraid. And they're so afraid that they decide to come up with a plan. They're plan is we know that there's this prophet and uh, the testimony from Balak of Balaam is that everybody knows whom Balaam curses is cursed and who Balaam is uh, blesses is blessed. And so Balak tries to hire Balaam. That's what it says that he sends him with the, the, the fee, the diviner's fee. Now, where did the diviner's fee come from? I don't know. Was that something that Balaam set up? Was that something that the kings of Moab had set up? Was this something that everybody else thought would be a good idea? I don't know where all of that came from, where the idea of a fee came from, but that's beyond the point for a moment. They come to try to hire him. And this is what they say. He said, the, the king of Moab, that's Balak, sends messengers, the princes that are in Moab. These are honorable men who are in Moab and they come with the diviner's fee in hand, offering to pay him to come and do this. And the king is offering him honor if he will do this. Balaam says, well, let me go and check with the Lord. Let me go and ask. And that's where things got interesting because Balaam, when he went to God and asked, he knew he said to the, to the princes, he said, I cannot do anything. I cannot say anything that the Lord my God does not want me to say. But there's some implication that's already happening. And that is that Balaam wants to make this curse. He wants to do it. He says, let me go and see if, if God will allow me to do it. He goes to God and God says, you shall not. Do not go with them and do not speak to them. And that's the thing I want to talk about for just a moment. As Balaam, who obviously knew God, obviously other people knew God knew that he was a prophet. He knew that he was a prophet and he goes to God. And when he goes to God, God says, no. Have you ever asked God for something, sought God for something? And God said, no. You know, I think that's the first thing that we have to understand is that when we go to God and we petition him and we ask him, there are times that God says, no, no, that's not for you. No, don't do that. No, don't go there. It's interesting to me that God so plainly said, no, this guy knows so well, Balaam knows so well about God that Balaam says, okay, rises up in the morning. And again, there's that indication as he comes out to these princes and he says, 
the Lord will not permit me to go. The indication is that Balaam wants to go. Balaam wants to do it. He's not an Israelite, but he does know God. And he knows that he has been blessed by God. What does Balaam's bless blessing look like? Well, Balaam's a prophet. Balaam can hear from God. He talks with God. And the things that Balaam says, they come to pass. The, the view of Balak was whom... Balaam curses is cursed and who Balaam uh, blesses is blessed. But Balaam's view of that is I can't do anything that God doesn't allow me to do. But here's this wonderful thing. God was working through Balaam. People knew of, of God through Balaam. He was so famous, by the way, that there are um, writings from this prophet Balaam that are found not, not in the Bible, but even centuries later, there have been uh, prophets that have been uncovered about this guy, Balaam, and, and, his, and his prophecies. Very famous man in his time, and the Lord was blessing him, but that wasn't enough for Balaam. The temptation begins to come in because Balaam doesn't just want the honor that God would give, but Balaam is starting to toy with the honor that man could give. So he goes to God. It's, it's obvious that he knows something is up here because he goes to God and says, well, let me go and see what God has to say. God comes to him and says, now, see, that's the interesting part. God speaks with him so plainly. And God says to Balaam, who are these men who are with you? Does God not know who the men are? Of course, God knows who the men are. That question was not for God. That question was for Balaam. That was God's way of, of showing Balaam, hey, these men are not good. Who are these men that are with you? What's going on here? Now, Balaam has to answer and he has to say exactly what they want. And he says, well, they've come from Moab and, and there's a people who've come out of, uh, out of Egypt. He doesn't seem to know, Balaam doesn't seem to know that these are Abraham's descendants. He doesn't seem to know that. He just knows that they're the slave people that have come out of, out of Egypt and they seem to be blessed by God, but, but Balaam, Balak wants them cursed. And see, that's the, that's the interesting thing here is that Balaam is having to go and try to curse something that he can see that God is blessing. Boy, doesn't that speak to today as well. How many people in the name of the Lord would want to curse something that we can tell God is blessing? So here's Balaam coming to God and God says, no, you don't go with them and you do not, do not try to curse these people because these people are blessed. Now, if Balaam had any questions before, Balaam now knows the people whom Balak is asking to curse, they are blessed by God. So Balaam goes back and says, I can't go. God won't permit it. Has there ever been that time in your heart that God has said no to something? You know that God says no to something. You know God doesn't want something, and, but down in your heart, you, you actually want it. I think that's one of the hardest things to admit about sin is when we actually want the sin. And the Bible's pretty clear about that. That's when, that's when temptation gives its way to sin, which gives its way to death, is when we want it, when we desire it. You know, it's one thing to know what God's Word says and to want what God's Word says, and then it's, a, it's kind of another thing, isn't it, if you think, I know what God's Word says, but I want something different. That's where the danger comes in, is that you want this sinful thing more than what you know God has said. So now which one's going to win, your desire or God's Word? Are you willing to present your body to the Lord a living sacrifice that you would say, even though I may want it, even though I may desire it, God has said no. I think that is where the American church has failed the believers of today is that we do not speak of what God said versus what we want. We talk so much about what we want, what we desire, how God's going to give us the desires of our heart and, and how God's going to bless us and how God's going to take care of us and how God forgives us. But we forget the fact that there are times that we may want something something. The sin is not in wanting it. The sin is when we want it more than we're willing to, to sacrifice our own wants on the altar of what God has said. And so I do what I want more than I do what God has said. By the way, that's seen all throughout the Bible. We're, that's not unique to us. That's what happened all throughout the Bible. And that's what happens to us even today. I desire something, even though God has said no, I desire something so much that I fall to it. And that is where the sin comes in. Balaam goes back and says, I can't go. Well, this is what happened. Balak, the princes go back to Balak and they say to Balak, hey, he said he can't go. Balak says, go to him again. He sends even more honorable princes, promises him even more. says, I'll do whatever you ask. Just please come and curse these people. And so more princes come this time, more honor, now even more treasures. Before it was a, it was honor and, and the diviner's fee. Now he's offering whatever you would ask for. Notice the little hint that Balaam dropped. He said, even if you were to offer me your house full of gold, you can almost see a, tw a twinkle in his eye. He said, I, I still couldn't do it. it, it this isn't about guys this isn't about what I want or what I don't want. God will not allow me to go. But nevertheless, now remember, this is now Balaam's proposal. Hey, y'all stay the night. Let me ask one more time. 
You ever do that? When you were a kid, you ever ask your parents more than once? I remember one time when I was a kid, I had a buddy, a buddy of mine that wanted to stay the night and he was going to, he wanted to stay the night at my house. I wanted him to stay the night at my house, but my dad said, no, he had already told me. He said, nobody can stay the night this weekend. We've got other stuff going on. Your friend cannot stay the night tonight. And so I told my friend that. I said, well, my dad said you can't stay the night tonight. He said, well, just go ask him. Even though I knew my dad had already said no to this, I went and I asked and I said, hey, can my friend stay the night tonight? And my dad said, I already told you that. No, he cannot stay the night. So I went back and I told my friend, I said, hey, I can't have you stay the night. My dad's already said no. And I remember that feeling of, uh, but I wanted it. And so my friend was sitting there and he goes, well, what if I ask? And I remember a big old smile on my face. Yeah, that's a good idea. You go ask. So my friend went and he asked my dad with my friend right there. My dad called me into the room and I remember my dad. I was, it was a, a moment. I remember my dad looking me right in the face and he said, don't you ever send your friend in here to try to ask me like somehow I'm going to say one thing to you and then change my mind. If your friend asks, I told you no, and it's no. Now he may not only not stay the night tonight, you're grounded for the next week. Don't ever do that to me again. I thought that was so unfair in the moment. I remember being so irritated and so upset with my dad. How dare he ground me for a week because I asked for my friend to stay the night and I had my friend ask that. But you know what? My dad was exactly right. I was trying to manipulate him. I was trying to send my friend in like my dad would have mercy on my friend. Like my dad would be, I don't know, maybe my dad would be too embarrassed to tell my friend no, or he'd just be kinder to my friend or whatever. But the truth is my dad had a reason for saying no. And that's why he said no. Balaam goes to God a second time because Balaam is revealing his heart. He wants this. It's not just Balak that wants this at this point. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Balaam is now starting to want this. Get the picture, even though God has been blessing Balaam, and even though God's been speaking to Balaam, Balaam is starting to have a desire to want what God doesn't want. And so God now says to Balaam, you want to go? Fine, go. But if you go, don't speak anything that I haven't told you. You can only speak what I tell you to speak. If you're going to go, you can only speak what I tell you to speak. Now we're going to see at the beginning of the next video that we're almost done for today, that at the beginning of the next video, we're going to see that God's anger is aroused at Balaam for going. And a lot of people think that's unfair because God told him to go, but then God gets angry about going. But you have to see it from the perspective that Balaam's heart is changing and Balaam is wanting to curse the people that God said, don't curse. God already gave him an answer. So God is not changing his mind and God is not being unfair and saying one thing and then doing another thing. No, God is teaching Balaam. And he's teaching us that we should put what God says even over what we want. Let's put what God says first and watch as if we seek the kingdom of heaven first. He adds the rest of these things to us. The Lord adds, he, he knows what we do in secret. When God tells us no to something and we, and we agree with that, when his word tells us no and we agree with that even more than what we want, what the Lord sees in secret, he rewards you openly. Which blessing do you want today? What Balak offers or what God offers? The honor of the world or the blessing that God has promised? That's the question I'll leave you with today. Come back tomorrow because we're going to see what happens as Balaam tries to make his way to go curse Israel. I'll see y'all there.